Hello and welcome to Pod Don't Lie with Sam and Stav. We are here with you motherfuckers, Corona style. We don't even know how, I don't even know how many fucking days it's been, dude. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going crazy in here. I, I had a bender oh, dude. this weekend. Sammy, I was gone off the edibles for 48 hours. <laughs> Sam, Sam, was, uh, Sam was potentially fighting the virus. Dude, I was so ill. I have not, I can't remember feeling that bad. And I was just thinking like, that's what scares me about doing the road right now. If I got that sick in a hotel room, I'd oh probably want to fucking off myself. I was thinking, like, I've never been sick, too sick on the road. Where, and I've come straight from the ER to a gig. Yeah. Like, and I've never been too sick right. to fucking bail on a, on a road gig. And this one would have, it would have had me on my ass. Crazy. And what I think I just, had it. It just out of nowhere, like, you haven't been going anywhere, have you? I went, I've got, the only place I go is a grocery store and I wore the mask and yeah, of course I'm like, listen to my girlfriend be like, this is cause you went without me. And I'm like, yeah, that's why I got it. You're, (laughs) although the truth is she might be right. Cause I'm sure I was like fucking scratching my head or something at some point, just being an idiot. Being reckless. It just, just being, and then, you know, dude, you were like, you were like you and McGregor in train spotting level of bugging out. It sucks. Yeah, dude. It fucking, I, I couldn't get up. Like you have to get up. She's just forcing me to drink liquids and you cannot, you're too weak to get up. That's fucking wild, dude. And you were feeling, this happened just on set like that. You were just feeling good. And then. I, I had a few glasses of wine before bed on Friday. I got some horrible news. A friend of mine passed away. So, oh, you know, geez, you just want to fucking, I know, man. Yeah, sorry from, to hear it. From alcoholism. And I, and I saw celib- and I'm like, let me fucking <laughs> yeah. remember him by doing like an idiot. Uh, you know, terrible news I get. So then I, I go to bed. I wake up wanting to fucking die. It's horrible. Jesus and you know, you're Christ. like, you're getting those texts from, I, yeah, I don't mean to be a downer here. I'm getting those texts from friends like, let's like start a group. And I can't respond because I'm just like, I can't, I slept all day. I'm taking like the little cannabis drops to just pass out. Respect. But, yeah, that's <laughs> that's what I did too. I had like, I had a back injury. I don't know. I tried to work out and I immediately fucked up my, my ass. I think I mentioned that I was I was I was standing up for our our Patreon episode with Tom the Car. I was literally standing because I could not sit down. Oh. And then I had just a bad headache, so I just was like, "Yeah, I should start doing drugs again." And I just got so fucked up <laughs> for the whole for forty eight hours. I completely just blacked out the days. You had you had your Rodman. Yeah, I really did. <laughs> Except it, yeah, your forty eight hours. My forty eight hours were just watching movies, eating Chinese food. That was my wild time. <laughs> but. Uh, I yeah, was man. dying, dude. I'm so glad it's gone. I was, I was in hell. I was in Fuck. fucking hell. Just back and forth from Sopranos and Seinfeld. Rerun, that is scary to hear. Passing out. Dude, and I think it's, we've all gotten to the point where it's like, I don't know if you feel this way, but it's like, it's been so long at this point that we've been confined that we're just like, mentally part of me is like, all right, this is over. Like, this is, how long can this fucking, I'm done. Like, I'm ready to just go outside. And then you hear like, you know, you hear about you getting sick or you hear about just like, you know, Atlanta opens up, Georgia reopens, reopens like their malls and shit. And then like a thousand people get it the next day. And you're like, fuck, we're going to be in here for a while. Dude, Um, it's one of those things. I feel like, like Bret Hart just put you in like the sharpshooter and you're like, all right, I tap out. And then he just keeps you in the sharpshooter for like (laughs) another four months. And you're like, all right, dude, I gave up. I know, dude. I really know. And then, and I'm getting to the point where I'm like, should I just, should I put a hazmat suit on and cut a dick hole out and go fuck some, go fuck somebody? (laughs) Like I, it's been so long (laughs) that I've gotten pussy that I'm like, and then I saw one of my friends tweet about how their roommate went, their roommate broke broke quarantine to fuck and she got coronavirus. <laughs> so I'm like, what fuck, dude. I can't even I can't even like sneak a little a little pussy in here. No, so, you can't. It's gonna it's gonna get dude, it's I don't uh, know, man. I might I think about it. all the all the roommates like that have had like, you know, male female roommates that have definitely fucked out of this. It's, oh dude, it's so ha- many. <laughs> Absolutely. I mean, I've dude. done that. I've done that not during coronavirus. <laughs> right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just like out of boredom. Like you're telling me that hasn't happened. Totally. I'm looking at my fucking male roommates. I'm sizing them up. I'm saying who's who's one is too hairy. He's out. But the other one, dude, kind of a smooth boy, you know, I don't know. <laughs> He's got a nice big big full lips. <laughs> now the penis is gonna be a problem. I recognize that. <laughs> that is one of the biggest stumbling blocks to me having sex with my roommates. But 
give me a couple more weeks in here, man. Who knows? <laughs> this is like the Seinfeld where Kramer starts greasing himself and you're just looking at your roommate. It's like a little chicken. He just... <laughs> 100 percent he just looks to me like a pocket pussy with eyes um, <laughs> any fucking way we uh i'm i'm sorry to hear you were sick bro um the last but, dance saved me because i woke up still feeling pretty rough yesterday but i was like all right i got i got the last dance tonight That'll we had help. some good episodes too sunday were they were they were they were fun there's a lot to yeah. cover so we should mention guys for everybody listening at home we on the second half of this episode, we're going to be joined by Dan Soder, and we're going to be talking about uh, Denver. He's a Denver boy. We're going to be talking about Nuggets, and we're also going to be talking about the first episode of The Last Dance. This is kind of a weird recap that we're doing because, for some reason, Soder only saw one of them. I'm not exactly sure why. I'm guessing um, it's because Billions aired probably at the Billions, time of the second which is episode. To, yeah, which you know, Dan, Dan's going to be our second Billions uh, alum. Oh, for, the, yeah. for the podcast um <laughs> actually third you're you you played his you're in his corner you're technically right, part man. of the billions was... universe <laughs> <laughs> billions in dc man i, I had a, had a right. lucky year last year <laughs> i love that dude um <clears throat> soda's a he's a legit actor and he's great billions is a great show and he's great on yeah. it yeah so so we will be recapping the first episode which dealt with a lot dealt with the dream team mostly but also really covered a lot of shit in there i mean that was that was uh when they that episode covered or was this the second one i forget there was a lot going on i'm trying to re i have i have it here in my notes yeah the first one second had episode is mostly the knicks yeah the first episode was kobe dream the first team one was kobe dream team yeah. uh all the jordan brand stuff it was all the and then it was also it Which also was touched fascinating on, also uh, touched on all the harvey gant jesse helms the Republicans still buy sneakers comment, all that stuff. So we'll talk all yeah. that, all that with Danny. But for this one, we should start with episode two, which dealt mostly with uh, it's him getting his three peat where you have to go through the Knicks. There's some agonizing. <laughs> there's some really tough highlights <laughs> to watch as a Knicks fan. Definitely tougher for you. Oh, I was not even cognizant. It hurt. Um, it fucking hurt. I don't see. I don't remember that year. I was too young. Right. But that I, year I, the next year is young. the next year is the first one I kind of remember. Which this, is, this is also agonizing. Yeah. The next year was even more agonizing because we came even closer. But yeah, uh, without Jordan, to take the first Jordan. two games off Jordan, we took the first two off Jordan. Yeah. Uh, Xavier McDaniel, like they didn't really go into it, but he was just a killer in the postseason for us. He was he played well against Pippen. So but they well. just had they, they just had the, more talent. They showed the brief highlight of Jordan going fucking off at the X Man. Because because of uh, just getting in his grill because he felt like Pippen wasn't doing it enough. Um, yeah. Uh, so that so that was what's going on, and the gam they dealt with all Jordan's gambling a lot, which is intertwined in that episode. Um, yeah, and, and Barkley, they talked Barkley too. Talked Barkley, of course, his MVP season. Um, but I want to start the gambling stuff was fascinating. I want to start talking about the man who's my who's my background. I don't know if for those of you looking at this visually, and for those who are not. <laughs> Um, the guy, so they showed the guy with the fucking crispy ass, fucking delicious perm, the gray, the gray, the gray haired, skinny, fucking wiry, uh, security guard that was playing that weird quarters was gambling on who can throw a quarter closer to a wall <laughs> with Jordan. It's a, it's a fucking problem you have when you're making up games to gamble. <laughs> Who can throw a fucking quarter closer to the wall? And the guy beats him. It's just like security guard. And he sh hits him with the fucking Jordan shrug. And you might think that this is just some guy who's like, you know, who works for uh, facilities or whatever, who works for the United Center. The United um, Center. Yeah. I did some fucking research on this guy. His name is John Michael Wozniak. Because I was, I was enthralled by this man. John Michael Wozniak. <laughs> Um, he, he's not just some fucking guy who, who worked like at the United Center. This man is a, he was a retired narcotics, uh, officer for the Chicago wow. police department, dude. He got the job. He's, he was George's private security detail. He would later go on to fucking run security for Jordan at his house for the rest of his life. The guy, unfortunately, the guy passed away. He had like colon cancer. Uh, but Jordan continued, he kept on the payroll until the day he died. He was like a security guy. He looks just wow. like some old, like wiry fucking, you know, 
he kind of has crackhead. I'm not going to, I don't want to say the guy has crackhead energy, but he does have, <laughs> it feels almost like a reformed, like, wow, we gave these guys that were on the streets jobs at the United Center. It has, he had that He also quality. has like a, he has like a DC supervillain quality too, though, doesn't he? Like, <laughs> like he looks like he would fuck with Batman. This guy. Yeah, yeah. There's absolutely. no question. Um, he, he, um, so yeah, he's just, it's just fascinating apparently. And the Jordan, wow. he became friends with Jordan when he, when his son was, he was, a, he, the guy had a newborn, this guy, John Michael Wozniak, and he crashed, he shattered Jordan's, the rear, uh, the rear windshield on Jordan's SUV when he was parking it for him. <laughs> because oh he, was my like, God. he was sleep deprived. <laughs> And then oh he was like, God. he was like, it's the first day he's working for Jordan. And he's like, I apologize. I have a newborn at home. When I get my paycheck, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll cover all the damages. And in the, in the article I read, it said Jordan appreciated the honesty. And from then on made special requests for Wozniak in the future. But I'm kind of wondering, did Jordan make him pay for that? <laughs> because that would have been so fucking wild. <laughs> he's like, I appreciate it. And then two weeks later, he's like, so that's going to be $242. And the guy's like, uh, <laughs> yeah, of course, Michael. <laughs> but, but yeah, dude, this guy is fucking wild. They called him Hollywood. He was, <laughs> he was like an insane, he was a narcotics officer. And he volunteered to work like the most dangerous areas in inner city Chicago in the height oh of God. the crack epidemic. Like he's insane. He was just like, he, did, he was not afraid of anything. He's fucking wild. Just keeps up, keeps a perm. Um, it, it's just a hilarious guy, and um, <laughs> yeah, no cop would have a perm like that. This yeah. guy's good. <laughs> yeah, I trust this dude. He, uh, yeah, dude. It's weird. A lot of the a lot of the guys who work at Gotham Comedy Club are ex cops, so a lot of them went undercover. And one of them uh, was telling me about it, and just shit. He he went undercover with the Albanians, and the Hell shit yeah. that he's seen, I cannot. He's been shot. He killed a guy. And then this guy tried to avenge him. Holy so he shot shit. him twice. Both of his arms were in fucking casts for what months. What the fuck? Yeah, dude. He, sh he came up to him and shot him twice and he survived it. I mean, he's a Jesus cool motherfucker. But, but he told me, he's like, he never can look over. He can't not be comfortable. He's like, I can never be comfortable. That's crazy, dude. It's yeah, crazy. I mean, they didn't go into whether this guy, this guy looks like he went undercover buying cocaine for sure. This guy, this guy, this guy, this guy looks like he 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 started in crack, but they moved him up to cocaine to infiltrate discos very very quickly, dude. He looks like he never left the hairstyle. Um, to take your your Doug Collins rollerblading comment, this guy definitely he yeah. cuffed people while on rollerblades. One hundred percent. This guy met Doug Collins at a disco doing cocaine in the bathroom. That's how he got his foot in the door with the Bulls. <laughs> him, and, him and Jerry Curl fucking Doug <laughs> became boys. That scene in Boogie Nights when Mark Wahlberg and John C. Riley are just like dancing to the yeah. new 80s. That was him. He was just like yes, doing that dude. little disco dance. Absolutely, dude. Um, he fucking rocks. I love this guy. And uh, uh, yeah, so Hollywood... Hollywood fucking Wozniak um, just, you know, they call it, he was like, he was, he was his own brand before he even met Michael because he was bracing a couple screws loose, you know? So Michael put him on the team. This is what other cops said about him. Other cops were like, yeah, this guy's fucking crazy. <laughs> 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 so this guy rocks, dude. I love this guy. And apparently one time he got, him. He, he gambled with Jordan all the time. And one time he beat him at pool at a Christmas party and Jordan sent him home. <laughs> he was like, oh my God. <laughs> he was like, I do yeah. love that he, that he does the same shrug as Jordan in Dude. the fucking, <laughs> so in, the, in, the, uh, in the series against Clyde Drexler after Jordan went he off. Hits him with the the yeah. He hits him with the shrug. What are, so funny. This guy rules. I wish we knew more about him. Um, and he, he had, he had, he got a jump man tattoo on his arm and then a 23 dog tattoo on the other. He this guy is so fucking cool. Uh I love him. So shouts out to we I just wanted to give John Michael Wozniak the highlight he deserved. Um, He's awesome. But yeah, let's talk a little bit more about like the rest of the episode. I mean, I think it was so it's crazy. It it hurt that it took Jordan's degenerate gambling for the Knicks to go 7 yeah. with the Bulls. <laughs> yeah, that's a good it really <laughs> it hurt that it took him 
pulling an all-nighter in AC and probably losing a shit ton of money for us to be like, we got a shot. This yeah. is our year. <laughs> it, felt, it felt like he was toying with us. Total. That's so disrespectful, dude. It wasn't like, like I had – I mean, I knew it was against the Knicks, but it's like you forget. It's that is the one good thing about this like documentary. It does put everything. Sometimes it's shit you you know about, but it puts it in like a context and like a chronological order that makes you recognize exactly what's going on. Like you know that he's at the ho- you know I. But for some reason, I thought this was at like the all nighter was against the Nets in like the first round. But this motherfucker is doing this shit in the conference finals. It's yeah. it's insane to be doing that. It's like game two. You already lost one. Yeah, it's, it's funny. You everyone lost praises one. Jordan. Everyone praises Jordan for his work ethic, but he is getting fucked. You never <laughs> see him without a cigar in his mouth. You're yeah. like, this is not a healthy guy. Yeah. He seriously always has a cigar in his mouth to the point that I'm like, the amount of cigars that we've only that we've just seen in oh, the yeah. footage is enough that you're unhealthy. Hundred percent. And that you mouth- always are clear on it. I know it would be it'd be hilarious if you at least you don't inhale a cigar. It'd be really funny if Jordan was a hookah guy, <laughs> <laughs> just in that little back room smoking shisha, just with like three Persians. Those his security details three Persians with their with silk. <laughs> Dude, also Jordan's fashion choices are so questionable. He's wearing like white like khaki pants I know. with a black sleeveless shirt and a hoop earring, and I'm like, who the fuck dressed you? Ro- it rocks that is so funny how he's that's like, how cool you are he's the most famous guy of all and he looked here's the thing he doesn't start looking dorky until he gets older like in the t- in, even in that time he's so handsome he's so like a ma- such a magnetic presence that you're yeah. like yeah dude i kind of want a beret in a in a leather trench coat <laughs> i'm like <laughs> i think i can pull off leather trench coat beret i think that's my move and then you're like wait a second he's just dressing like sam kennison it's just that he's fucking attractive you know? Hell yeah, dude. <laughs> Sam Kinison, Jordan's awesome. That's an awesome fucking guy to be. But dude, it Give hurt me the ball! You, you realize, and I hate to get back, you know it's only a matter of time before I get back on the Knicks, but it's like, dude, the, Ewing just did, never had the offensive help that, you, like, that yeah. team is comparable to the Pistons because of how they play. Isaiah had more offense around him. Dumars is just a better two guard than Starks. I mean, I love Starks, yeah. but and then Lambeer can score. The, Oakley can score, but he's a defensive player. X Man sure. is a defensive player. Starks is like he's a three and D guy, but he's not a scorer. You know, he's not like right. a playmaker. And that's the thing they did talk about them almost as like the heirs to the the Pistons sort of legacy. But it's like the Pistons had a lot more offense in terms of like, yeah. especially like they were kind of built. It's not like they had a fluid offensive game, but they did have a lot of guys that were like, I mean, Isaiah could go get you buckets and that's kind of hard in the, in crunch time. I mean, Isaiah is a small guard and it's like, but you don't want your offensive. I mean, Shaq had this problem to a certain extent too, where it's like crunch time. You really need a wing creating. It's hard to get the exactly. ball into a fuck. I mean, Philly this year has that problem where it's like, MB is without a doubt their best offensive option, but it's like, at the end of the games, how do you fucking feed a big man? You, it's really hard. Did you hard. hear the, mu- the murmurs in Philly, how they wanted maybe, maybe trade Ben Simmons for uh, Damian Lillard, some sort of package? Wow. That's crazy. I, mean, I did not hear that. I mean, maybe it's bullshit. I saw a few Instagram posts about it, but like, man, a picture that, Lillard on the Sixers, how sick that team would be. Totally. Totally. But that's still, that's crazy. I mean, Lillard's way better, but he is older. Yeah, and and it would. Hmm, this is fun. We should talk about this on the Patreon episode. Let's do some trades on the Patreon episode. Um, well, you know we're covering CP3 to the Knicks on the Patreon. Yeah, oh yeah, because <laughs> you know as as long as we don't give up too much, I'm loving it because we're not winning anyway. Let's. I'm actually with it too. I I think it's a good move too. I I brought the. I believe if we go through our text messages, Sam. I brought this up to you maybe a month or two ago, and you were skeptical. So it's nice. I to was see skeptical you turn around. just just because of the money and because, but at the same time, like. I just want that guy in there because he's going to yeah. be good for the young players. Right, a culture setter. But anyway, listen, we're going to be talking about all that stuff on our Patreon episode this Thursday, patreon.com slash pod don't lie. Sign up. We got some heat on there. But um, no, to go back to what we were saying about the Knicks, yeah, dude, it was a hard – it's like you see some of those scores too, and it's like the Knicks put up like 68 points <laughs> like in some of those games. Like it's disgusting. I was looking at some of the – like, you see some of the, you know, I don't know about the Bulls series, but it's like the Pacers, some of those playoff games are like 
74-69, and it's yeah. But you think you think horrendous. James Harden's going off for forty against the Knicks defense with X Man and Starks and Ewing and Oak? Like they're they're Ding them up tight, dude. Well, I mean, but this that's that's interesting though because it's like they're going to be spread the fuck out. The the Rockets are a really interesting team to say to play against those Knicks because it's like Russell Westbrook is the fucking power forward. Who that's who Ewing's guarding. <laughs> Ewing was. A two-way killer, though, man. Like I know, that, that's, I why, know. that's why I felt bad for Barkley because he just like Kevin Johnson's a great point guard, and Dan Marley was a great player, but like they're just not comparable to Jordan's supporting cast. So, like you got to feel for Barkley because it also it made me sad seeing Barkley interviewed by Scott Van Pelt afterwards because you could just sense that Barkley like it's a bummer that he's not friends with Jordan anymore. It sucks because yeah. they went through battles together and then they were teammates together on the dream team. And it, it, it made me a little bummed. I, I, I feel like this is a big blind spot for me. I don't remember why. That because happened. he questioned Jordan as an executive. Uh... He said he's not doing a good job and he spoke honestly. And I think it pissed Jordan off. But yeah. that's who Barkley is, man. Like I think Jordan that's is fucking a- ridiculous. I mean, and, and, and if there's a problem with this documentary and Jordan in general, it is that sort of like there can be no second guessing. There can be no, you can't, you know, take any shots at me whatsoever. Yeah. I mean, that some of this does feel like we're in the. Sometimes the documentary does feel like they they're whitewashing it, which I, I was at, which I'm actually glad that they brought up. Um, that they that they brought up the 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 Gant Helms thing where he wouldn't endorse, you know, the first uh, Democrat black legis- uh, state senator senator from North Carolina in history against a repulsive person. Yeah, but you like know what? Helms. You know what? It made me miss Obama so much because Obama just speaks so fucking reasonably about stuff. Like yeah, just but the he, was, he didn't speech. say shit, dude. That's classic yeah, but, politician but, shit. I know, but yeah, but okay. What would Trump? Trump would just been like, he's a loser. <laughs> yeah, but that's he's a fucking can't. loser. <laughs> yeah, Obama was like, look, I mean, like, look, like, I would. Well, he said, look, I would have liked for him to speak out, but he, but he was a guy who was trying to figure out who he was and what his image was, and how, like that yeah. was a thoughtful response, at least as opposed to fucking. Trump, who just would have behaved like a child. Yeah, I mean, the bar is fu- – that's that's a low-ass motherfucking bar, I got to be honest. All right, Against well, a white supremacist, he should have endorsed him. But anyway, whatever, it's fine. He should have. Ob- he should have. He, he made enough on Nike sales that he yeah. should have. <laughs> yeah, he, maybe- wasn't, he wasn't hurting. Let's put it that way. <laughs> they, they cut to the guys like Cam Spade. He, he's like, black people are the worst. And, oh, and Jordan's like, look, my hands were tied. Look at his feet, no, though, I- and they pan down, and that guy's wearing Jordans. <laughs> <laughs> Except for their footwear, they can't do anything right. <laughs> well, dude, that was that was that was crazy that he didn't because you know, know that like he cut it he cut a check, but it's like yeah, the money is not no. The He's same. the most famous person in the world. You don't think that fucking tips that election at least a little bit? Uh, anyway, we're getting into the next episode, the first episode, and actually, I see here on our Zoom link, guys, that we have our boy Dan Soder. So there might be a weird little edit here, or maybe we do it seamlessly. Who knows? Just but fucking seamlessly we're gonna we're gonna it, we're gonna welcome our boy Dan Soder into the mix right now. Let's see where's our boy at, Danny boy. Dan, <laughs> yo, Danny boy, what's Looking up, good. bro? Am I the only one not green screened? You fucking dork. Fuck yeah, dude. Dude, I did you this sure? green screen for you, Soder. Where's your shit? Where's your shit? You can fucking throw a little Zoom background in here, dude. You don't need don't, a green screen. I don't like that you're rocking Antonio McDice. That feels like a person's <laughs> yeah. dad. You know what? This was actually this was actually throwing shade at my organization because you fleeced us in one of your many fleecings of the Knicks. Oh, dude, let's talk about it. Let's just fire this fucking thing up. Because <laughs> Soda, Soda, whether you guys don't know or do know, uh, is a huge Nuggets fan. Oh, yeah. Big nugs, boy. Danny, let me ask you a question real fast before we get really rolling here, big dick style. Do you have an opportunity to – can you record your audio from your end, or should we get it off Zoom? Try to get it off Zoom. Okay. No worries. We can do that. Uh, I just just was wondering. Although you're sounding clear. Thanks, dog. Um, Anyway, um, thanks for doing the show, Dan. Well, let's just get rolling then, baby. How are you? How are you doing, Dan? Let's talk. Oh, I don't know if you guys were going to do like a whole intro. If no, no intro, yeah. dude. Oh, no. We, this is oh, our no. buddy Dan Soda from uh, from Billions, from his new HBO I don't need special, it. Son of a Gary. No, you fucking You, need, you sit you know the fuck it, back baby. and you take I'm the intro, sorry. bitch. You take it. You it's got Netflix credits, motherfucker. 
his <laughs> Comedy Central Hour special. You know Dan from everything. He's hilarious, a, dude. Mm. The Bonfire with Big J Okerson and a diehard Nuggets and 49ers fan. That's yeah, how I know my buddy Dan Soda. My parents were, uh, my, my dad was in San Francisco. My mom was in Denver. Uh, loved the Niners. That's my number one team through and through. And then um, picked up the Nuggets because everyone else liked the Warriors. I liked the Warriors, but then uh, run TMC, Tim Hardaway, oh, Chris yeah. Mullen, and Mitch Rich. Uh, yeah. Yeah, Mitch Richmond, Mitch right? Richmond. Yeah. That was the – when they when Tim Hardaway went to the Heat, I was like, I'm good. I don't think I like the Warriors. And yeah. I loved LaFonso Ellis and Dikembe yeah. Mutombo. <laughs> And so I was like, and they also, the Nuggets switched to that, like, dark blue and dark red logo with the mountains yes. on it. And I was like, yep. dude, I'm a, I'm a Nuggets guy now. I just <laughs> yeah, remember being like, I love the Nuggets. It was and graphic designing that really uh, stole your heart. So all you got to do to, to, sway a, to sway an eight-year-old child, yeah. just have good graphic designs. But then it was also like, the Warriors weren't great. No. They, like, drafted no. Chris Webber. My dad, my dad was a massive Warriors fan. My grandmother. Oh, really? My 93-year-old grandmother to this day loves the Warriors. Like, wow! I would say it's on point with the Niners for her. Like, wow! During, during Warrior season, she's like, she loves the Dubs. She's like, good oh, for her, know. bro. Yeah, but then it's so weird because I chose the the Nuggets as kind of like a fuck you to that family. Yeah. And so then now when I spend time with her and the Warriors are like a dynasty, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you guys bought your dynasty, right? You know, you like bought it. <laughs> He's like, I like the way Kevin Durant plays. I'm like, well, he's a hired gun, so have fun with him for another year. You know, it's funny. I think of when I think of the Nuggets, I think of Soder because even when I was at the Basketball Hall of Fame, they have giant Nikola Jokic sneakers to autograph, yeah. and I sent a picture to Soder. I was like, Soder, yeah. Jokic, because he yeah, is I mean, the fucking man. The Nuggets, they're a very fun team right now. They're a very fun team because they're not built with a superstar, and that's the most important part because Denver, what I learned, and we'll get into the Knicks and Nuggets history right here, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> was I learned from Carmelo Anthony that the Nuggets can never have a star. They can mm. never have a guy like um, LeBron James or a Carmelo Anthony or Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Like Carmelo works in Cleveland because he's from Cleveland. You mean uh, LeBron? LeBron. Le yeah, LeBron. LeBron works in Cleveland because he's he's from Akron, and right. it's like, all right, you got to you got to right. Be, There's that mythology, kid. the hometown hero mythology. Yeah, it's like like Rose in Chicago. Exactly. It's almost like you can do oh, like Chauncey in Denver. It was like True. you can't do anything wrong. And then watching the Nuggets front office just be like, whatever you want, Mello, whatever you want, we'll go and get it for you. Then that '09 team that lost to the Lakers yes. in the Western Conference Finals because of two Trevor Ariza steals. That was the yeah. reason the Nuggets didn't go to the finals <laughs> that year and play the Celtics. That was a great series, though. Great, great series. series. And, and, and Melo, Melo had one stinker, but to his credit, after that, he played like a fucking warrior. Dude, it was awesome. He was, was awesome. a stone-cold killer, and he could yeah. take that shot at the end. And I loved Melo, and I was all about Melo. He came in, and we immediately went to the playoffs. We got knocked out of the first round by the Spurs like the first five years. Right. But – for me, Melo was like the guy where I was like, oh, we finally, Denver finally has a superstar. Yeah. And you saw him. And he truly first, was. In, that, in the beginning of that, bona fide superstar. Man, with Melo with the braids and those shiny ass fucking powder blue jerseys. That was, yeah. those are beautiful. The Nuggets. Those Coke, those Coke dealer blue. That, was, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that, that was team was up. awesome, though, because that team was built for him. Once they got Billups. And they had, you know, Ke uh, Kenyon Martin and Marcus Camby. Dude, that was Chris, a cool and, team. But then you also remember young J.R. Smith. We yes. had uh, we had an off-the-bench Birdman who was playing Loved the balls him. off. Yep. Camby was a little past his prime, but playing his ass off. And there was also a lot of good – Defensive it, player of the year, wasn't he? One of yeah, those dude, years? They, they set up the Nuggets to be this great team. We lose yeah. to the Lakers. We kind of knew we were old. And then Melo starts putting a stink out of, like – yeah. Nah, I, I want to go to L.A. or New York. And then the fucking Nets owner was the one that fucked up. That Russian motherfucker was like, <laughs> how much money you want to play for me, Carmelo? I give you everything. And yeah. Melo was like, oh, f straight up fuck the Nuggets. And he started right. getting booed the last half of the season. Nuggets weren't a playoff team. We weren't good. And so when Melo gets dealt to the Knicks, which I knew was going to happen, and I was fine. Yeah. I was fine if we got no, – like, you, you made Gallo out beautifully. Yeah, I was looking for Felton and Gallinari. I was like, if we can get Gallinari and Felton and a couple draft picks for Melo, fucking beautiful, because he's going to walk away from this team regardless. Yeah. 
then they dealt Chauncey, and I was like, that was fucked up. Like, that was a fucked up move for them to be like, give us Chauncey, because Chauncey's the king of Park Hill. That guy's like a Denver legend. I did not even realize he was from Denver. I did not know that. No, man, he won, a, he won a senior high school championship by pa- making a pass off the back, I think, at the Civic Center. Might have been, been at McNichols <laughs> Arena. But that he, rocks. Before he was Mr. Big Shot, he was known as Smooth. That was yeah, his nickname. Dude, he was so no, good. And he went to Colorado. He went to, like, he turned down Duke in North Carolina. And I think it was actually he turned down, like, Kansas and UCLA to go play at Colorado. Did a season. Wow. He was still a lottery pick with the Celtics. Yeah. Him yeah. and Mercer. Went, Unfortunately, like, had, had Patino in the mix. Yeah, then he got dealt to Denver. Then he went to the Timberwolves. Then he went to the Pistons, became Mr. Big Shot. Came home to Denver as, like, this seasoned fucking point guard. He's been, to this day my favorite NBA player outside of Shaq. It's, wow, it's Chauncey. I love Chauncey too. There's something about the way Slow. he plays where he just controlled the tempo. He was just fun as hell to watch. He was just a good basketball player, and he's yeah. like, solid. And yeah. you saw like everyone around him. Like without Chauncey Billups, that 04 Pistons team doesn't beat that Lakers team with no yeah. chance. No, because you got you got both you got both the Wallaces, and you yep. got like a, a Tayshawn Prince who unbelievable, but I don't know if he's that leader. And no. Billups, dude, Billups, I fucking love Chauncey Billups. You're absolutely um, correct. Where he was, he's like, he's fucking, he's at the head of Voltron. Yeah. He's, he's Rizza. You, you know yeah, what you I mean? Need, you like, need the dude yeah. with the vision of like, yeah. oh, we can beat. And we got by some, some tough teams in the playoffs with Chauncey at point guard. But the entire reason I brought this up was because now the Nuggets have a team where it's like, oh, we don't have a mellow. Jokic is our biggest star. And Nikola Jokic is just like a fun goofy saint bernard dog where he's just like i like basketball and Denver, denver's nice and you're like thank you but, but he's a top three center in the league for co- dude no i think question. he's a top five player in the league really he finished top a, five last year at mvp i think he's a, i think he's a top five player in the league he just the only way i can describe his playing style is it's not the prettiest and it's not it's most, pretty though. It is pretty. I like it. I think it's, it's pretty. Got, dude, honestly, once I say this, good luck watching him and not seeing this. He looks like a dad playing basketball in a pool with his kids. <laughs> You're right. He's so doing like, this move a lot. <laughs> dude, just the way he gets the rebound, his elbows are above the water. And you know, because he's taller than them, he can just like put it in. But the motherfucker balls out. And yeah. what I like is they have Jamal Murray is such a great just peace to have yeah. we have like the yeah. big guy that can do everything you have a, you have a jamal murray that can just go off i love gary harris i love that entire team and i was really really bummed that the season got canceled because i truly thought it was going to be a western conference final between the nuggets and the lakers i thought wow. that was wow. gonna be, i thought we were going to get because we got close last year got knocked off by the blazers in the semifinals we're weak now yeah but i think we took a chunk out of them and that's why i mean the warriors were the warriors but i think we we took them six we took yeah, six games? Seven. Seven. It, seven. it was seven. seven. We and won that games. one game was like triple overtime and Rodney Hood just fucking went off. Right, right Yeah, right. that was like the most uh, Jokic clock, the most minutes ever played by a center, I think. Oh, crazy. my God. Like, but you crazy. guys, I got to say, though, I mean, I think that's a nice optimistic fans view, but I think it took you guys a lot. I think, I mean, it took you a lot to get past those Spurs that were not good. Yeah. Like, just I, straight I, up not good. Well, the moment that it happened was Jamal Murray was like, 0 for 11 in the game yeah he, he had gone off and everyone's like and dude i remember watching this game who was call- it might have been isaiah thomas calling the game because jamal murray hits a shot and isaiah yes. just goes sometimes a shooter just needs to hear that net snap the right way and then right. jamal murray went fucking he did. He off had a huge fourth quarter yeah and blew that fourth quarter up nuggets win and i think that set the tone where the nuggets are like they're a, a, so much more of a mental team than i think a lot of like the Lakers or the Celtics or these people with like histories. I think the Nuggets are like fuck. Like I think they still feel like an ABA team a lot of the time. Yeah. <laughs> they're just like, I, should we even be here? I don't know. Yeah. And then when they get games like that, they're like, oh yeah, we can. That's what happened in '09. They were like, oh, we'll ball with anybody in the league, and they just had this attitude of like, we've got a superstar, we've got great players, and so I yeah. think that's what the this Nuggets team was missing was like that confidence of like a Chauncey or a Mello to be like. We got this. right, and but I think also it's like the problem is sometimes I do worry about overall the plan is because I think you guys are investing a lot in Murray, and I think he's good. We, I mean, we re-signed him. I, I think yeah, super max. Could... I mean, you gave him the max, but it's like that's what that's kind of what scares me is like, is he if he can turn into the complimentary wing scorer that Jokic needs, if he can turn into that guy who he showed up 
as in that fourth quarter. But and I, I'm not I'm not I'm obviously not quitting on him because he's fucking good, but that's a little scary, man. That's what happens sometimes. Teams get fucked giving because you just basically have to give the max to your second best player. But that happens in every sport. Every sport yeah. they're like you have this unit that works and you're like, well, we have to pay one of them a lot. Yeah. Jokic and, and him both have the max. Yeah. Yeah. And Jokic and Murray makes sense. I, I love Gary Harris. So I wish it would have been Gary. Yeah. They got the max and we'll see how Michael Porter. That's true. That's your big, that's kind of the big like wild card with the Nuggets. Well, sure. Cause the Knicks passed on him famously for Kevin Knox and there were boos, <laughs> man. Dude, my, I remember that. It's, it's going to look so stupid. <laughs> If Why, if you think off, Michael Porter's going to be a stud? I think he's going to be better than, than Knox, yeah, unfortunately. I think he'll be better than Knox. I don't know. Here's the thing about Michael Porter Jr. He was like, in the summer leagues, he was tearing it up. And everyone's yeah. like, this guy's fucking, he, the Nuggets got the steal. And this is after, uh, this was in between last season and this season. He, they're like, he's fucking killing it in summer league. And then he gets injured again. And you're like, fuck. Yeah. And then he's like injured again. And you're like, Fuck. So but he was coming like, on nice this year. I don't know. I think he's the one that I'm – I would be very – I would be very hopeful about that guy because it's just like he kind of provides a weird – that scoring punch you could need, a go-to score. He kind of – if he pans out, he solves all your problems. Yeah, well, uh, he's, yeah. he's a small forward that fits in for, like, we're going to lose Millsap. We can't yeah. afford to keep Millsap. Now for sure. Max I love Millsap, though, because he, he does it all, man. He's, he's like a, an old-school player. He is – without a doubt watching this the last dance you're kind of like oh yeah i forgot that the league was filled with guys like paul Millsap." right yeah. right you're right. right you're like, right Millsap was playing. a second round pick dude he played behind boozer on utah you forget that guy like no one was high on that guy and then he comes in he was utah, an energy guy he comes into utah and he's a fucking all-star and yeah like, like oh shit all right maybe we fucked up he's great in atlanta too before that yeah. was i really mean when we got good. him from atlanta i was like i remember that free agency everyone was like the Nuggets just took Millsap, and I was like, "I'm kind of okay with that." We're building smart. A team. He hit threes. He plays D. I love him, man. Now the problem with um, the Nuggets and Sam will know more <laughs> about this than anything as a Knicks fan is our front office consistently Oof. fucks itself. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when we used to have George Carl back with the Mellow Days, right after we had. When we when we dealt Mello to the Knicks, we got like Felton, Gallinari. We got a we got basically yeah Wilson guys. Chandler, Mozgov, Mozgov, two first round picks, two first round picks, and we were running everybody out of the gym. We were putting up like 125 points a game. Yeah, we got, Carl got Coach of the Year. Our GM got GM of the Year, and then they got fired. <laughs> <laughs> like only the fucking Nuggets. Who you want to talk about players that we've passed on? We used to, when Kiki Vanderway used to be our GM, we fucking drafted Ray LaFrentz instead of Vince Carter. So it's like, yeah, we've <laughs> Kiki Vanderway is one of the all time s- sounds like a sexy divorcee names that a man can have. Yeah. <laughs> Kiki I'm trying. Van- <laughs> Kiki Vanderway sounds like a woman that dances with a boa around her neck. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Although Johnson, I've said this before, I'm obviously I'm not comparing Ray LaFrentz to VC, but. LaFrenz played in the wrong era, man. That guy's like a three-point shooter and a shot blocker. That guy would have been yeah. nice right now. Dude, right now he's him on the Yeah, you would have put – even now, but I would even say if you put him on the fucking 86 Celtics or you put him on the fucking yeah. 89 Pistons. You're like, this <laughs> right, guy right, right. Fucking light it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, it, it, oh, yeah. dude, you fleeced us so many times. I mean, that's why I have McDice as my backdrop because I remember we traded – I think we traded what became Nene, Nene for you guys. Yeah. And – uh Marcus Camby, who already was better than McDice. McDice, like <laughs> right, right, McDice right. was was coming off a twenty and ten year though. So all the Knicks fans were like, "We got our guy." Let me tell you right now how I know that the Nuggets one hundred percent played you guys fucking dirty was because we drafted Antonio McDice and he was unbelievable. Jump out of the roof. Yeah, we dealt him. Or we, I, he might have signed, but I'm pretty sure we dealt him to Phoenix for a couple picks for some plays. So he was on the Suns. One of the, the only time I think there's like... Shit, did we get him? Am I mixing up trades? Did we get him and trade the rights to Amari for him? Is that what it was? Am I fucking this up? I don't think so. I don't know, but Antonio McNeese definitely came back to the Nuggets after Phoenix because he blew his knees in Phoenix, and then the Nuggets right. re-signed him, and we're like, what the fuck? He's got no <laughs> knees. And then he went to New York, but it might have been a three-way deal with Phoenix. I'm mm. not sure. Those Wasn't it the, can get fucking murky. It was Camby, dude. It was Camby. Here's we go. The, the Knicks sent 
Marcus Camby, Mark Jackson, and the rights to Nene, uh, who's just made the seventh overall pick to Denver. Great. And they coming got Bra- McDyess. Coming out of Brazil, just fucking balling. Nene was so good. <laughs> Whoever so Luis Gomez does that uh, Brazilian steak dinner every year, yeah. they have Nene's jersey up, man. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, they have the fucking powder blue Nuggets jersey up. What <laughs> happened? So, so McDyess plays – he only plays 18 seasons, and then the Knicks – trade his salary to get st- uh, Marbury and Penny Hardaway from the Suns. <laughs> you want to talk about it? For Amari, right? <laughs> What's didn't that? They, didn't they deal Penny and... No. I don't think so. Then who did the Knicks trade for Amari is a good question. Uh, no, nobody no. signed for free agency. We- no, no, but I mean, we we did a trade involving... I, I, think, I think Dan's right. I don't remember. Yeah, Amar- it- the Amari, Knicks got Amari in a trade? No, Knicks dealt Amari to Phoenix, I thought. Oh. Yeah, here After? it is. The, oh, no, you know what it is? The Knicks acquired Marbury, Penny Hardaway, and Cesare Trebinsky from Phoenix for Antonio McDyess, Howard Isley, Charlie Ward, and Marshy Lampe. Oh, Magic Lampe. You know Remember him? <laughs> Dude, yes. And also, Sam. And Milo Zbrujanic. You guys got you guys got McDice. I think he got injured in New York. I once. fucked this up. And yeah. then he went to Phoenix and then he came to New York. Cause dude, I remember the Nuggets were so fucking bad that we went to a game and uh by the fourth quarter we went we were like third row from the court. Like that's oh. how bad it was. Yeah. We just, like we just <laughs> fucking walk downstairs. And we were getting blown out by Phoenix and everyone's like, you can just fucking sit wherever the fuck you want to. <laughs> and I remember McDice got a sports center top ten dunk. And in the background of the dunk, me and my three friends are walking th- from the aisle into the seats. <laughs> it was big. me and my friend Dennis and my friend Joey. And, and they called. I remember at school the next day, they're like, because we went on a weekday, which was like a big deal. And the next day at school, he's like, did you see we were in the fucking background of McDyce's dunk? And I was like, no. I went home and watched Sports Center and never saw it. Damn, dude. Respect. You guys you guys did fleece us so many times. I mean, the, the, the rumor in the Carmelo trade is that, that – the Nuggets were already shocked at how much they were getting from the Knicks. And no. then Dolan and then Dolan came in and said, you want everything? And he pulled his pockets inside out and he said, he goes, here, take another first round pick. And they were like, wait, what? Brutal, dude. He, I, I'll tell you right now, the fact that we got anything for Melo. Unbelievable. Because he publicly was like, I'm done in Denver. I'm going to New York. He said it. He said, I'm going to go to New York or L.A. Specifically, that's what he said. He, goes, he couldn't stomach another half season of booze, and that's probably what happened. But yeah. Well, they I mean, the Knicks really fucked up because the fucking – that well, the was Nets Dolan. Were, the Nets were rumored to be trading for him. That but was the, the Net, rumor. But then the Nets tra- – no, that season they trade for Der, uh, Deron Williams. So they're not – they're done. They And remember, people forget how good he was. No, I don't because he knocked Arizona out of the fucking tournament my senior year. Like my, he, my senior yeah. year at U of A, we were in the Elite Eight against Illinois, and we were up 15 with 90 seconds left. Yeah. Killing him. We he was insane. Him. And, 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 his, Williams, and that was a good and, team. Yeah, him and D. Brown. D. Brown hit like five threes in the last yeah. 90 seconds. And you're like, Jesus. Yeah, he was, dude, he was so good in his prime. And he, he the thing, people forget about him because he dropped off so hard. Yeah. But if he was the player, if he if he didn't drop off, if he it was more gradual, those Nets teams would be a lot better. I mean, the KG, the KG Pierce trade looks so stupid now, but a lot of that is because Williams fell off a fucking cliff. He was supposed to be the engine behind those teams, and Pierce and or Garnett especially was supposed to be like, you know. The aging, the aging guys that were there to you know provide support, but and Joe yeah. Johnson too, and Joe Johnson of course, but they it was all like, fell off a cliff. But dude, Darren Williams was in the conversation with Chris Paul, like he would outplay Paul hundred percent. It was a real debate, it was yeah. a, and it's crazy to think about that now, where Chris Paul is still playing fucking shitty teams into the playoffs, it's and crazy. Williams is doing TikToks with his daughter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, you see that? We're like, oh man, you were the truth, and it's like. <laughs> This is rock. Oh, oh, God damn it. Dude, I remember when we got mellow from you guys. I remember the first night I was at the fucking comic strip and I was so jazzed up because they played on the TV. They played the song Black and Yellow, but they Mm -hmm. played it to Stad and Mellow. And I was like, oh my God, this is this is gonna work. Yeah. This is actually gonna happen. Well, that was that was when fucking Dolan really fucked because before that, Donnie Walsh is doing a good job. And if the Knicks had just gotten Mello in the offseason or, like, not just giving them more, I mean, Mello with all those guys, Mello with Danilo and fucking Mozgov. Dude, it would have been crazy. It would have been crazy. Also, the the fucked up part about the whole Mello deal was, like, 
he just straight up was like, man, fuck you guys. I don't want to come here. And we're like, we love you. Please. <laughs> fuck you. <laughs> Suck my dick. And you're Suck like, my fucking dick. <laughs> I have to go. So, I have the to thing go that annoyed her. me was because I was waiting tables at Dos Caminos when it happened. And so, you know, when you're a lunch waiter, you watch ESPN nonstop. Yeah. It's like the second you're on the table, you're just like, I'll watch Colin Cowhead. I'll watch whatever the fuck is yeah, on. Of course. Anybody I'll watch. I just wanted to watch something that, you know, just want to get away. And I just remember that trade. They would always put it on SNY. Is that the one that carries the Knicks? Or no, that's MSG. MSG, yeah. And they, they had this commercial running. Where it was like, I'm coming home. Yeah, I remember that. And it's like, it shows Mello, and it's like, <laughs> welcome back to New York, Carmelo. And it's like, hey, fuck nuts. He was born in Brooklyn and then grew up in West Baltimore. I know. Stop sucking your own dick, New York. He's not from here. That's what fucking annoyed the fuck out of me because we loved him. Everyone Yo, loved he's him. He's got a fucking WB for West Baltimore yeah. on his shoulder. It's tattooed. He went to, he went to high school. He went to high school at a prep school out in, you know, in Baltimore County. He was in those stop snitching videos. Dan, are you familiar with the stop snitching no. phenomenon? And Sam doesn't know about these either, dude. These swept, these swept high school when I was in high school. Mello was in like, it was in the era of like, Wait, was would, that, did, did this, sorry to interrupt, but did that uh, inspire the t-shirts with the stop sign that said stop snitching? Yeah, I mean, it was, yes, it was the same branding. It was the same branding. That was okay. the DVD cover. This was in the era where people made their own DVDs. Yeah, so, like, dude. these drug dealers in Baltimore just made, just shot their own, like, show, their own TV show. <laughs> and Mello, and they would just go up to famous people and be like, yo, what's up? And just, like, and Mello was there hanging out with them because, like, you know, the they yeah. wanted every drug dealer in, like, from a fucking small town, whenever there was a ball player, they wanted to ingratiate themselves and Mello was a huge deal so Mello's just there like yo what's up stop snitching <laughs> like, and, yo, oh my God. and all yeah. those guys like went to jail like Hold you know the fuck on is it this the video stuff i'm gonna i'm gonna share my screen real yeah. quick Please just we make sure it. to do audio also yeah 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 i uh I, I usually use something else so i'm trying to learn i usually use webex oh okay um but let's see if we're so when you do share screen, it'll say on the bottom, it'll say uh share computer sound on the Got bottom it. left. Share optimize ready, guys. Yes, sir. Oh, wait to share your computer. Please install the zoom audio device. Uh, <laughs> <damn it. laughs> Anyways, I don't know if you can share. Yeah, I'll share. Uh here I'll do it right now. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop sharing and then I'm gonna I'm gonna message you the video because I think we need to watch this. I agree 100. I got it right here, right, dude. I'm down in the chat, but here it is right there. There's the YouTube video for Stop Snitching because it's a whole fucking hour, and I might get into these videos. <laughs> dude, they're so good. <laughs> Hold on. I found a minute 26 with Mello just standing there. So this Perfect. might be – this is exactly what we need. This is young Mello. Here we go. Because if you think of it about it, dude, if you're Mello and you're a fucking top high school student in Baltimore, which is ravaged by drugs, I mean – He's there while the wire is being made. Yeah. Man, what are we going to do to him? We're going to lynch his ass if he ever come here. When they come play the wizards up there, we're going to lynch his ass. Yeah. If a young buck, I like you. Okay. <laughs> I like you, my man, and everything. And the game that keep his mouth shut. I'm just out there bullshit, man. Leave that man alone, man. That man don't bother you. That man got kids, man. He can't afford to put that boat with you, man. You stand that shit, man. You don't take care of your kids, man. <laughs> What's crazy is. What we gonna do here right now? This is what we gonna do. I think that is mellow. We gonna try to make it. Man, that's mellow. We gonna come out together. We gonna make it in together, man. And all we gonna do is just stick together. You feel me? Yeah. But you ain't gonna stop. So I'm gonna stop talking that shit. Yeah, that's crazy. Cause you gotta think. You ain't gonna stop. That's what we did with his penny. Hold on. Who? What he did with his bronze medal that game? Why ain't yeah. where, yo? You just told me you threw that motherfucker overseas. Huh? Oh, this is after he's already been in the league. <laughs> oh, dude, he's fucking... He's falling in the league. Said, There's one that when he's in high school. My whole summer chasing a big pin. Now they're just trashing the Olympic team. Dude, that's so funny. Hey, guys, he gonna tell a bitch he works for a hundred mil, and he chased a big pin for two months straight. <laughs> Dude, that's so funny.
that's so funny that he's like, yeah, fuck a, <laughs> fuck a bronze medal. <laughs> Dude, that guy just said it the funniest way possible. He goes, how's this man worth $100 million? He's chasing a penny for two months. You know, like, dude, that's so that's funny. Hilarious. That's so it's funny also to call like, a, a fucking bronze medal a penny. Stop so snitching good. audio is, is not great. They yeah, really I, need to up the production value the, the a little. video I'm, and the audio. Dude. Honestly, <laughs> Sam, I don't think they're going for production value. I think they're going for <laughs> message. I think yeah. the message is the most important part. They're like ISIS. Yeah, they're like, the video's grainy, but you can tell it head is definitely cut off. <laughs> I wouldn't judge too hard because we cut it and head completely off his body. <laughs> yeah, so it was like one of those things of being a Nuggets fan in New York, watching Melo get dealt here, and then watching Knicks fans. Because... Knicks fans are, listen, you guys, we're watching it on the last dance. It's like Jordan's, like, it's the best place to play. Yeah. It's the fucking garden. I still haven't been to a Knicks game at the garden. No, I want to do that when that, when, you know, next season when the Nuggets come, let's yeah. fucking do it. Let's go yeah, as yeah. a group. Let's do it, baby. I'm in. But it's, uh, in. Uh, I saw a, a, a great rant back in the day when uh, LeBron went down to Miami originally when he first went down to South Beach there was this Bill Burr video blog where he <laughs> was just shit talking New York Knicks sports fans and he's like oh. why do you gotta act like you're the fucking best for basketball he goes the Celtics they've won fucking 18 championships and you're acting like you're better than us that's like the <laughs> twins saying they're better than the Yankees they had two chips and they were in the 70s but he's like he just brings up this point that it's a weird thing because Knicks basketball should be the best. It really should. It should be. I do like that he worked it back to New York being great, though, with the Yankees. That was yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. But I think in my mind, I feel the same way about the Knicks being good as the 49ers being good in the NFL. I right. think it's good for the sport. When the absolutely. 49ers absolutely. are good, everyone's like, it's a classic team. It's a classic. You see the red and gold. The and jerseys, it. baby. It's really what it is. Our dumb brains root for colors. Yeah. And it's just you want to see that fuck. And the thing is, the Knicks, we, we've been so bad for so long, they never missed the entire decade of the 90s. They never missed the playoffs once. Ever. And Not by the once. way, they were always a fun team to watch with Ewing and Starks. It was just fucking fun to watch them. And I, yeah. remember, yeah. Being, I remember being a kid and being like, the Knicks and the Bulls, to me, were in the and the Celtics personified East Coast basketball. And I was like a Nuggets fan, and we liked we had these like weird like the SuperSonics, and we just had these like weird teams that weren't like they felt more modern. They didn't feel like right. a throwback, kind of like in hockey when you have the what is it, the original the, six? Yeah, the original six. It's like yeah. the Red Wings and the fucking Blackhawks. No, you're like, absolutely correct. There's like this feeling of like, oh, this is a historical team. And just what's crazy about it, another comparison to the 49ers in the Knicks, is like I knew the Niners weren't good because the front office was shooting itself in the foot. The 49ers, like Jed York and Trent Baalke, the GM at the time, were just like fucking it up. Then Jed York gets out of the way, lets John Lynch and Kyle Shanahan run it. Yeah. And now we're back at the top of the NFL. And it's like everyone in sports can tell you. Right, right, right. was gone. Yes, yes. Knicks would be great. <laughs> great, dude. It's, it's fucking crazy. It's dude. a one-for-one one equivalency. The second he takes over, it's done. I mean, honestly, it's yeah. like a disease. It's like when they fucking cure the disease, all the symptoms go away. Yeah. If yeah. you get rid of Dolan, I guarantee the Knicks make the playoffs within two years. Yeah, well, for sure, dude. I'm, I'm with you 100%. 100%. And honestly, Sam, and I think I don't know. It might take longer than that still, just because you got to. You got not in the east, bro. Not Not in the east. east. Motherfuckers will be flocking here. Dude, are you kidding me? If Dolan was gone, and the the ability to play at the Garden as your fucking home team, and it is that that special. You know better than than any of us, Sam, how special the Garden is. It's It's the most special place, dude. To bring a championship, you guys are hitting Rangers territory in the '90s, where now it's like. Now it's about to be fucking 40, 50 years since you guys have had a title. And it's like, when is that going to happen? Yeah. Yeah. We're talking young Phil Jackson. Phil Jackson was somewhere getting his fucking dick absolutely demolished at one acid. He was doing water acid. He was doing fucking orange sunshine, (laughs) meeting God on a rooftop. And fucking (laughs) when Dumbo Brooklyn was just old factories. Oh, yeah. Fucking a fire on the mountain. Yeah, 100%, dude. Dude, he's just rolling blackouts. And he's just like, whatever, man. We got Now the man can't use his fucking spine, dude. Yeah, dude. Earl the Pearl Monroe is not a pearl. He is a shell. (laughs) shell Earl the Shell Monroe. Yeah, dude. But he's... 
on it, and I, Sam, you're one of my friends that I've said this to several times, especially when I was drinking. But I said it, and I remember saying this to you at Cabin one night, or I go, I'm going to tell you this right to your face. The second the Knicks get rid of Carmelo Anthony, the Knicks will be my East Coast team. <laughs> yeah. Because I needed a New York team. And I was like, the second you deal that puffy asshole, I'm on board. Damn. It's funny to have the vitriol from a Denver fan yeah. who deserves it because i love mellow man dude, i love I that mean, he's, he's baltimore i get yeah. why you love him also yeah. like, dude but here's the thing stavros Cheating. i loved him yeah i loved him he yeah. was like dude though he fucking immediately when when the pistons took darko i was like <sighs> well here we go yeah absolutely that draft that fucking draft i was like when Cleveland got when we got the number three pick, I was like, "All right, well, here we go again. We're gonna get another Rafe LaFrance, you know, right, right, Darko, right, 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 right. Chicka Lock on this, right?" And, and fucking he, the Pistons were like, "We got Darko," and we're like, "What? Yeah, mellow to the fell right into your laps." Yeah, and then and that draft also had Bosch and Wade. That draft is stupid. Yeah, dude, if, I thought like I honestly was like, "Oh, we'll take Wade or Bosch." Yeah, third, right. Darko in a weird way, that him, I think. that would have been fucking better for your franchise, though, because because of the kind of guy Melo is. Dude, yeah, I'm I mean, not gonna he, lie, man. You look at how things went. I think if we would have taken Dwayne Wade, shit totally. would be a lot different now. I think a Denver lot might have had a chip by now. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um, Wade is the kind of guy. I mean, Wade. If Wade goes to the Pistons, that's perfect for them, dude. If they would have perfect. Had, if they would have replaced fucking Chauncey with. Dwayne Wade. Yeah. Yeah. Or rip him, or you keep trying to run. As a rookie, as a rookie they, don't, they don't win. Dude, he Wade. was good. He you was know what, though? good. He, he, what the fuck? On did... the bench. If he's yeah. on the bench behind on the bench, yeah. and, and putting scoring could, punch, he's exactly the, what they need. Was that the 03 draft or the 04 draft? I think it was the 04 draft. Right? 03. No, it was before they won. It was right before they won. So it was the 03 draft. So you have a Dwayne Wade as a rookie sitting behind Chauncey Phillips throughout that playoff run. Yeah. Hunt, yep. Get the fuck out of here. The and one we thing got him, he we was got great. They took, he took the heat to the playoffs as a rookie, didn't he? With Karan Butler and Lamar Odom. That was kind yeah. of a sneaky, Dude, he was a sneaky great. fun team. Yo, he was I great off him. rip. I loved him with Marquette. Him and Travis Diener. You yeah. just fucking, <laughs> Travis Diener was a white boy that could bang shots. God, he was fun to that watch. Is the, that is the most three-pointer. That's a perfect name for who he was. Travis yeah, Tra Diener. God, let Diener shoot. Steve Novak was Marquette, man. Yeah. No. Dude. Oh, yeah. Another Marquette, one. Novak Marquette and Diener. Players. But it, it is a thing where you, you see how it all went, and it was like, we got mellow. I was so excited. And then yeah. for him to be like, man, fuck this. And granted, there could have been shit going on in the front office that the fans had no clue about. Like, they could have been yeah. disrespecting him. But from everything that I heard, it was like, it sounds like they're just giving him the key to the city. And he's like, yeah. fuck your city. Fuck and totally. Denver's not, it's not like he got drafted by like this tiny market. Denver's a pretty nice market. No, Denver it's is a not, small market. It is a small market. And that was the problem is because the first thing that came out was when he married Lala, he was like, my wife can't work here. And it's like, well, then live in Denver when you play and then live in LA. Right. Everyone lives in LA off season. Yeah. What are you talking about? Yeah. Denver's is a great place to live. Also, you'd think it would give him the discretion to cheat as a legendary cheater. You'd think he could just be fucking, oh he would be up God. there, dude. You know how many pasty white women I know that would have just thrown themselves at, at fucking Mello? <laughs> dude, you my stayed? favorite, one of my favorite moments of, of reti semi-retired Mello was when he got caught fucking that lady on a boat on Lala's birthday. Dude. And he was like, nah, that's my friend's wife. He was downstairs. <laughs> <laughs> It was literally Lala's birthday. He's yeah, trying so <laughs> the funny. photos leak on her birthday. And he's like, Yeah, no, it was a business deal. <laughs> You're like, what does that mean? Dude, it's a business but you deal. you even hear Jordan say, like, of this top one on one players and Mellow's in the combo. Like, where do you rank Mello as offensively, like one on one? Where do you rank him ever? Yeah, he's gotta be know. he's gotta be high. For is that was that episode six of the last dance? No, he didn't talk about that. Was not in the documentary. It was on Instagram though. He just oh, okay. Mello shared it on Instagram, but it's oh, like yeah. <laughs> where he's yeah, like, cool. "See, I'm still you know." Although another can... perfect idea, another thing, another perfect encapsulation of who Mello is. You know how they have those interstitials where they have like a famous person or a basketball player talk about what the Bulls meant to them in the, like, before the last dance. Yeah, I think yeah. it was episode three. It was the Rodman episode where <laughs> Mello was like, shoot, I remember being a little kid and seeing Rodman say, I don't even fucking feel like being here. And me being like, yeah, 
that's badass. And it's like, what? That's what you remember from the Bulls? That's how you, you remember your Rodman being like, fuck this bullshit. You need to remember just, you're like, you know what I love about Rodman? Apathy. Yeah. <laughs> Guy didn't give a fuck. And that's what you I couldn't, you couldn't watch Rodman play defense once, Mello? Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Honestly, it was like uh, it was like having a spouse that has a drinking problem and you don't want to admit it. When Melo would play defense, you're like, yeah. I, he's had a he's had a long day. He scored. Yeah. Oh, dude, when they showed a clip of of Jordan being guarded by Allen Houston, I'm like, yeah, maybe not the best defensive assignment. You know, Houston yeah. was the one guy on the Knicks that didn't play defense back then. Yeah, yeah dude, great shooter. But, uh, I loved when they showed when they were showing the '91 uh, Finals. And they were, or it was before that when they were talking about the Easter Conference Finals or against Cleveland. Yes. Oh, so it was the semifinals. He's like, "You're gonna put Elo on me?" Right. It was a mistake. <laughs> Which was a mistake. Craig Elo. <laughs> Elo just caught two stray drive-by shots that that, that episode that he was not ready for. Dude, if you like, watch that, if you're part of the Elo family and you watch the Last Dance, you go like, "Ow." And Elo's the kind of guy who he's talked about it. It's like every day of his life. Somebody brings up that shot. It's not Bill Buckner level, but it's fucking hard. I don't but know, it's, dude. It, it's it's up there with like for, Ernest Biner fumbling at the one. You know what I mean? Like, in the, but it's also you're playing defense on the greatest shooter ever. Ever, it's Buckner not just Buck, made an error. It's not Buckner level in terms of like what it cost his team. <laughs> yes, obviously he is not as at fault as those other ones, but it's so much more iconic. Yeah. Like that's a fucking yeah. that everyone's seen that. I you've seen that highlight before you know who Craig Elo is, or even before you know who Michael Jordan is. You just see yeah. that and you go like, "Oh yeah, that's what happened." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's without a doubt like the the shot. I mean, Byron. You know, I'm excited to see as they go farther into Last Dance uh, that Utah series in '98. I'm very excited yeah. to see how much they are like. Did Jordan push off? Did yeah. He push off? <laughs> the well, answer is they, yes. He did. He definitely obviously. pushed off. But I mean, off and he goes all look, the way. They, Byron Russell would go that far without being pushed. Yeah. Oh, it, it was insane. I mean, you heard it. Magic said it on Team USA. Magic like puts his arm around him. He goes, "Oh no, I touched him. It's a foul." Like yeah. he yeah. fucked with him about that. Yeah, that yeah, was then, a funny then, ass line. By the way, yeah. it was great that uh, it was great that Jordan fired back. Was like, "You you haven't had a foul in a year." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what? Yeah, Jordan's not a great trash talker. Dude, Jordan, but he's so good. He's so good that you, even when he's talking uh, to Jerry Krause, it's like. It's just mean. It's like that's the that funny. Yeah. It's he's not funny, like, but it's so with. It's like a. It's a. It's like an evil stepmother. Yeah, he's just it's like, like, he's, he's like, talking to him like Cinderella. That. You'll get. You'll get shorter. Like, yeah. <laughs> you fat little pig. Dude, that's what he did when he goes. Is that, are those your diet pills or the ones that you take to stay short? And you're like, Jesus, Jordan. It's just fucking man. He's like, like a mean least, girl in high school. You're like these aren't witty at all. You're just yeah, you're, breaking my spirit. Stop, yeah. prom queen. <laughs> yeah it was so funny how they just want to destroy anyone kraus even like i mean i felt so Yo, bad for that's one of the big takeaways from the episode ku coach <sighs> tony ku coach is in the middle of his country being ravaged by war Dude, and he stayed it's just, it's and he not stayed even a, he had the even, option to leave and he fucking stayed and they're like this guy's soft i'm like they're in a civil war civil war it's not even a regular war it's you, you're yeah. fighting yourself your friends you're fighting your brothers. Yeah. You got to go get just butt fuck everyone. And knew by the way, if everyone they had knew that, in 92, it was like, well, the dream team's going to win. Yeah. But if they had Yugoslavia at full strength and it was like Petrovic and Kukoc and Vladi and, and they combine Croatia and Serbia, they're right. the biggest they only, threat to they the only US. Lose, they only lose by 16. Yeah. yeah, which is, but that's at that time, dude. Like, yeah. it's hilarious that Jordan's like, let me at him. And I'm like, dude, you brought the, you brought the 11 best players in the world with you. Yeah. You're only, <laughs> your player on their level is Christian Leitner. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's the only player on their level. That Leitner like, is Dad. better than whatever farmer you paired with Tony Kukoc. Yeah. yeah. Oh, this guy had to sew his wife shut from a fucking <laughs> shelling. And now he's got a guard bird. <laughs> you got a guard bird at the end of a fucking. You're like, eh, I've, I've watched all my crops burn, my wife, her sister, and uh, my daughter were all raped by soldiers. You want me to key up on Mullen or Malone? You know what I think of when I when I see that is you remember? Hey remember guys, Greg, how are we doing? <laughs> Michael, just Tony's like Michael Scotty, good to see. You. And they're just like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if things, if things work out, I come to your dream country. And they're like, fucking rain on them. 
Dude, but you remember when Geraldo had that bit about how Greg Geraldo had that joke about going to war with countries that don't even have matching uniforms? And you're like, that's how fucking poor these countries are. They're like, they're like, wear something tough looking. (laughs) That's what I felt like. These teams, this is who we're going against. Yeah, Croatia, they're just like, I don't know, long sleeves today? (laughs) Lithuania had to do a GoFundMe to get to the Olympics. They were so so war torn. The fucking, that's where you get the iconic, like, deadhead. Lithuania yes. tie dye. They so cool though. They had to get start to do a fundraiser. They were doing bake sales to get to the Olympics. <laughs> Dude, that is so Brutal. funny. They go and in a surprising twist, <laughs> Czech Republic is going to ask to play skins versus shirts because <laughs> they don't have enough money for a uniform. They uh, actually, this was pretty cool last night because Billions season five premiered. Yeah, shout yes. out. And fucking magic tweeted about it. Magic, was I saw. Like, I brought that up to stop. Yeah, we it's incredible. About it. I was like, that's dude, awesome. that's fucking great. Magic's like, I love billions, and you're like, magic watches billions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> magic, magic knows the name of fee. This is crazy. <laughs> M- magic knows my big white head. <laughs> <laughs> but dude, that Hell '92, yeah. and we we you know, I was talking about it while I was watching Last Dance, but it's like, dude, that '92 team was like that made basketball that made like it was listen i i knew my dad was a big basketball fan so magic and bird obviously were in my life that was kind of what i knew about the nba and then i was young enough i'm 36 that i was like young when jordan started taking off so like i was and i was so hyper focused on joe montana that i was just like oh yeah jordan's like the Joe Montana of basketball. Right, right, right. Or like Wayne Gretzky is right. like the Joe Montana of hockey. And then you right. like start watching Jordan, you're like, I love Michael Jordan. Every single person <laughs> yeah. was like, I love Michael Jordan. Yeah. I love him. Right. He had the IMAX movie. I don't know if you guys remember that. You go to the no. Natural History Museum and watch an IMAX movie about Jordan. Oh, I do remember that. I don't yeah. remember. I and never made like, it to that. And it was like, he was so big that you were like, oh, of course they make a movie about Michael Jordan. Like, Space Jam made the most sense. You're like, for sure. I would love to see Michael Jordan play the Monstars with Bugs and the Looney Tunes. But it's Bill true. Murray. It's like, and, and yeah. the thing, I mean, we think about that as like a little thing that's like, oh, he's so famous, he had to do it. But even some, I mean, the Dream Team obviously expanded the, the reach of the game globally, obviously. But even something as fucking dumb as Space Jam, it's like, I was, I'm 30, I'm 31. So it's like those five years, Dan, are a big difference to me where Space Jam almost was kind of my, that was like, I remember that as my intro to basketball as much as the last season of Jordan. Like that's the first, I remember I was like in See, third grade or something like that. I just remember... My first like real memory of basketball was Chris Mullen, Tim Hardaway, and Mitch Richmond, That's and awesome. then it was That's such a fun team. Mitch Richmond was a killer. They were all. So I, I hate Tim Hardaway so much because not only did he play for the Miami Heat, my, one of my least favorite teams ever, but he gave birth to Tim Hardaway, who the Knicks paid uh, seventy-two yeah. million dollars to. <laughs> so the Hardaway uh, family has cost you as a fan a lot. It is yeah. it's hurt. Although Tim Hardaway was a great player. I mean, unbelievable, I, uh, and I love him. And, I love and Tim him Hardaway him. Jr. Can, he can ball. We just overpaid him. But yeah. Tim Hardaway Jr. could fucking – that crossover was filthy. But my favorite memory of basketball, and like the thing that, that, that got me like, oh, I'm, I like basketball. I mean, I loved football, but I was like, what got me to like basketball, I think even over baseball, was that 94 Nuggets team that beat – we were the eighth seed and we beat the number one Supersonics. Yeah. The best of five. With, that was oh, with Tumbo yeah. grabbing the ball, and I was like – I love the Nuggets. Like, was Matumbo your fun. guy? I was a more Lafonso Ellis guy, and then I really liked Matumbo. But then he got dealt to the Hawks first, yeah, yeah. and then he went to the Sixers. And so yeah, I was it was Hawks, like, Hawks to Sixers. Yeah, yeah. And I was kind of like, oh, I miss Mount Matumbo because he was Mount Matumbo. It was just like perfect for Colorado. But I loved Lafonso Ellis. And then when he was gone, I was like, oh shit. And then I just started liking. Uh, I liked McDice. But then it was like Chauncey. Oh, you had some shit teams. You had Van Exel was fun for you guys. Yeah, but the Van Exel deal to with the Lakers, like I think we got rid of a couple people that I liked. I just remember being like underwhelmed by Nick Van Exel. I was like, this is the guy. Yeah. yeah. And then, but dude, it, in in ninety seven, in ninety seven ninety eight, you had eleven wins. <laughs> yeah, but guess what? In seventy one. Guess what? Who? Guess what? One of those wins was over. The '97 Bulls team. Wow, we're one of the we're one of the we're one of their ten losses. We're the fucking, that's hilarious. And by the okay, way, okay, so you traded Tony Batie and Tyron Lue for yeah. Nick Van Exel. 
Yeah, yeah, t- yeah Tony Batiste. Hilarious. Fuck, I ever heard that name. Who was who was Stav brought up was present during the Paul Pierce stabbing. He saved Paul Pierce's life. Tony Batiste yeah. was there. He drove him to the fucking hospital. What didn't the guys that stabbed Paul Pierce were the like the made men? What was the name of that group? Oh, I don't know. It was like a rap group that was also That's like, hilarious. <laughs> dude, yeah. yeah, dude, that uh that Nuggets team was like it was fun, but what kept me liking like the point I was making was like the ninety four team was fun, but then ninety five by the way, we got butt fucked by the Jazz the next round. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. Like, sent home so fast in '94, and then I kind of like liked the Nuggets, but it wasn't like the thing of like, oh, basketball is great. I love the Nuggets. It was the Bulls. It was all yeah. the Bulls. It was like right. a Saturday morning. If you turned on NBC and there was yeah. some fucking Saturday afternoon basketball and Michael was playing like the fucking Knicks, you'd be like, oh, this is awesome. I'm just gonna yeah, keep on. yeah. Everyone, everyone was like, if you were a fan of the Bulls in the 90s, you were the least creative kid. Totally. That's totally. They were also the coolest team, unfortunately, because they had – I mean, it really wasn't just – Rodman Jordan. is the cherry on top, too. If you're, like, a little kid that's, like, some guy with fucked up hair and, like, he's got piercings and shit, you're like, oh, yeah, whoa, dude. what the fuck? A lot of future drug addicts were like, I'm a Bulls fan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dennis Rodman. <laughs> But they a had lot, everyone, dude. They a lot of everyone. bisexuals by necessity. Oh, were dude. Big fan. Future yeah. bisexuals by a necessity. Of young, yeah. A lot of young men have felt some movement that they didn't feel before Rodman, where they're kind of like, maybe I'll try it. Hey, I'll try it. It's crazy yeah, that he partied like he did, and he was still the best rebounder at 36. Uh, yeah, that's right. crazy. I would like to see a graph of um, who your favorite player was and on the 96 Bulls and the probability that you have a Prince Albert piercing. Oh, and I'm going to yeah. say Rodman, if Rodman was your choice, it's Dude. off the charts. <laughs> I would say if Rodman was your favorite player in the 90s, or if your favorite, if your favorite player on the Bulls was Rodman, you definitely are in a nipple play. Yeah. As a guy. <laughs> There's a 0% chance that you're not into heavy nipple stuff if you like Rodman. <laughs> Fuck, man. That was, uh, it was such a good team. I mean, I hear you, man. The 90s, 90s basketball was just awesome, though. Just re-watching, like, those Suns teams, those Sonics teams. The Rockets like, teams. Like, ro- young Robert Ory? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but about it. hold on. I hate him, him in, so much. I know. But then it bled into fucking the Lakers dynasty, which if yeah. you Phil Jackson, what a move. Dude, totally. Now you're seeing all this shit on The Last Dance about Jerry Krause. Yeah. And you're like, dude, good job, Phil. Although, I mean, I, I've been reading Kobe's book, uh, the autobiography, or not, the, just the biography of Kobe. It's, you don't realize, and again, you don't realize how seamless a transition was. He, he literally just goes from the, the Bulls. He takes a year off, and then he's fucking, he's coaching Kobe, and they win. It's insane. And they, he brings everyone with him. It's the same infrastructure. It's the same coaches. Tex Winter, it's all those guys. They're running the triangle. It's like, it's crazy. And he's it's, got Shaq and Kobe. Yeah. Because to me, again, that's the one thing about this documentary. Some of it in the early parts is kind of like, all right, I feel like I've seen all this stuff before, but it puts everything in a context where it's like, yeah, you you forget Kobe was in an all-star game with Jordan. It's like he starts Dude, the By the way, he game. wasn't in like a Wizards all-star game. He was in a fucking Bulls. No, he's 19. It's his second year in the league. And he's playing against Michael Jordan at Madison Square Garden in the. It's like crazy how much they interlap, uh, overlap because, you know, I remember Kobe fully like Kobe in the. I mean the Shaq, Shaq and Kobe Lakers are like I have full memory of that. And then yeah. Kobe's second run, second rings. It's like I was a fucking adult. I was in college. I totally remember that. So the idea that Phil Jackson went straight from Jordan right to Kobe. And there was, there was, it wasn't like there was any gap in between. It's weird. No, he went straight from, he went to the Lakers. He could have been coaching uh, Fred Hoiberg and rookie Elton Brand. Yeah. Instead, (laughs) he's part of Shaq and Kobe. Like, come on, dude. Insane. Yeah. The Bulls fucked up. Yeah. The Bulls fucked up. I mean, this, this, this entire documentary series is a 10 part look into why Jerry Krause just made the largest mistake of all time. Just well, check yeah, your how, ego. Even when they showed him at the championship, being like, "No, this is a great organization." In the that was second, insane. the second championship, that was the insane. second one. Because you got to give credit. This is the greatest organization. There's a lot of good players. There's a lot of good coaches. It's like, motherfucker, without Phil Jackson running, yeah. <laughs> running the triangle, Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen. Also, it's not you football. About? You can sort of make that argument in football. There's five guys on the fucking court in, in basketball. It's Without, the sport where the superstar makes the most difference, bar fucking none, bro. Yeah, it's insane. It's, it's ridiculous. How about uh, how, how about much? How Kobe, different though? In the beginning uh, of this one. Yeah, dude. How what? It was. 
It Just was, seeing Kobe sad. was was sad, man. Yeah, dude. It was, and then it was Stern honestly, right after, dude. It was yeah, a tear. The, the Stern Kobe double shot. You were kind of like, it, there, there was just like a weird feeling. It's also like, um, it was like this odd thing of them watching Michael Jordan talk about Kobe without knowing him. That was yeah. like kind of like that little Laker boy. <laughs> yeah, he goes, he goes. You know, he's gonna try to take us all one on one. He's like, let him try to take me one on one. Let him yeah. try to take me one on one. And you're like. Man, and then to know that Jordan gave such an emotional speech at Kobe's funeral. It was the only time like, he seemed human ever. I would say that Kobe's funeral speech from Jordan made up for, or about half made up for his Hall of Fame speech. I think, it, this, I, I, I think it made up for it, dude. He was so, in a re, he was just such a real and like, it was so touching in a way that you didn't think Michael Jordan was capable of. Even because, in this documentary, He's still kind of isolated. I mean, he gets a little real here and there, but still it's you can see the points where he he's not going to change the way he thinks. He's never going to change the way he thinks about yeah. Isaiah. He's never going to thaw out of some of these grudges. But the Kobe thing was so monumental, and it shook him, and he's so human in a way you didn't even think he was capable of. Yeah. Right. I mean, we've done this documentary. His fucking wife and kids haven't come up once. Once. <laughs> Once. once bro and by the way it's crazy probably i mean jordan's got last say so that was him being like mm, what's going yeah. on at home during this time he goes don't worry about it yeah <laughs> yeah by the way, my eyes are yellow dude why are you gonna ask about my family yeah, i have yellow eyeballs <laughs> yeah. it's also like i wonder if now i haven't seen episode six yet i've yeah. only seen episode five do they get into the gambling oh yeah yeah, yeah they do big time okay good that was six, a good teaser. i'm watching six, it tonight Six is my favorite episode so far. Yeah, so I mean it hurt me because I get into the Knicks a lot, but it, it was okay. a good app. I'm it excited. Good you guys just got sure. me. You just got guys got me gassed. It was better watch. than five. Five okay. to me felt a little. It was a lot of good stuff, but it almost felt overstuffed because you yeah. have Team USA, you have the All Star Game, you know, you have you have the the um the Kuko stuff was funny, uh, but then you also have the like the the only time they ever get substantive so far or show him negative in any light is the Gantt versus Helms, like where yeah. he won't endorse. You make a clear thing. And that, so it's like so all that stuff was good. And the Dream Team, obviously, you could do – obviously, you could do it your own documentary on that. But it just felt like there was there too much There is a great stuff. documentary on it. I think it's all on YouTube. It's, yeah, it's, it's good. It's only like an hour ten. And but, the book is really good, too, on, on the yeah. Dream Team. Um, but Six is like – it's really concise. It's gambling, and it's it's about – them getting their third championship so it's just it's very good nixon sons but dude you know yeah. like that yeah that's i still like the first one but you're right there and it takes you back that all-star game at the garden where you're like fuck i forgot about like grant hill just being yeah. like the shit grant hill yeah. was so nasty I met, totally. I met grant hill at a planet hollywood <laughs> in phoenix arizona hell yeah after yes. the pistons <laughs> played the suns my mom was on Whoa. a business trip and that used to be our vacations because we got free hotels that rocks and we went to a plant in Hollywood, and I took a piss next to Grant Hill. Wow. Whoa. Then I had him sign my menu. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Do you remember how nasty that, that guy was? I mean, he was just like, if he Dude. stayed healthy. Yeah. Crazy. What he was like crazy? a 26-5-5 five and five guy all day. What yeah. are the all-time what-if type of guys? Easily. And um, Penny, who was also on that team, two of the all-time so, what-if guys. Yeah. Dude, nuts. Dan, what would you say your favorite Nuggets team of all time was and, and your favorite, just your favorite player in general? Uh, my favorite player is Chauncey Billups, and that makes my favorite team the 09 Nuggets, commonly yeah. referred to in Nuggets fan circles as the Fuggets. Were, <laughs> that's, what, that's what a couple of our enemies called us. And uh, we were all. I loved when AI was on the team. Yeah, I know he's washed, but that was J.R. Smith and AI. And yeah. mellow in the fucking in the that powder in the shiny powder blues. blues, but I like no uh, defense, no defense. no day. But you know George Carl coaching them to fucking 115 points. I just loved seeing it, dude. I yeah, but that 09 Nuggets team is my my favorite. And then my, my second favorite team actually was last year's team, the number two team. You know that yeah. lost to the Blazers because I thought we were fucking great. We were, we had a lot of like different pieces that stood up, and it was just a fun team. Yeah, and I'm guessing your current favorite player is Jokic. Love Jokic. Yeah. He's the best. I love, I love He's Nicole. so lovable. He rocks, man. He's awesome. He's awesome. Fuck yeah, Go dude. Nuggets. Well, thank you, bro. I mean, uh, we appreciate you taking your time. I know you're yeah. out. Listen, let's, should we go through his credits again? No, should we no. embarrass <laughs> this motherfucker again? No, <laughs> just definitely watch season five of Billions. <laughs> it's such a good show, man. We, had, we just had Brian Koppelman on. Listen to that up if, if you haven't heard it. But, you know, so happy to have Soder here. Great stand-up comic. 
Great yeah. radio show. It's so and billions. What, I mean, what can't this man do? Stop. Well, what can't what his, this? I'll tell you what his basketball do. team can't do is win a championship. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> but Sam, it's been cool because season five premiered. It was cool watching people who were binging be like, "Oh, I just got to the part where Dan Soder gives Sam Marilla's weed." Yeah. <laughs> in, the, in the boxing episode. That could have been a more fun day, man. I I, <laughs> I love getting to be a part of it. It's such a good show. Yeah. It was awesome. You got to eat fucking lunch with Rich Eisen. Huge. Dude, I just I just did a show out here and he brought you up. He was like, "Remember we did that day with Soto?" He's like, "Well, Soto <laughs> just did my show and uh fuck We got to get Eisen. Eisen. We got to get Eisen, Eisen in the mix, dude. dude. Rich Eisen's the motherfucking man. I love that guy. He, he was, was always my man. favorite sports center guy. Dude, he, he was told, that was my he told, era. He told Sam and I a really cool story while we were waiting to film the boxing scene where he was talking about how he went into the president of ESPN's office and he was like, "You got to kill the scores scrolling across the bottom. You got to get rid of that ticker during Sports Center." Because then people don't see who they like. It can ruin it. You're gonna ruin our highlights. Right, right, just, right. And they were like, "No, no, no, no." People love that shit. And I was like, "Dude, you're absolutely right. I think that killed Sports Center." Yeah, totally. But keep that shit on ESPN News. I'm going to Sports Center for the fucking experience, bitch. <laughs> he was such a good dude, man. He, he really funny. nice guy and yeah. uh, fucking. Uh, Trey Wingo has been DMing me. Couldn't couldn't be a cooler shit, guy. Dude. Come on, dude. Look Trey Wingo is such a cool guy. Hell yeah. awesome. I love those those sports center guys are the shit, man. That was our, I mean, Stu Scott in the nineties, man. Yeah, it's been cool watching them uh show like sports center clips uh, totally the, the last dance and you're like, I love that dude. Dude, I remember I remember being fucking, you know, like 15 years old eating cereal before school when you get picked up by my friend watching yeah. sports center and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude. Jordan's coming back this year and I'm like, all right, I got fucking, I got, I got uh, underwhelming geography. I got, ge- geography. <laughs> I got pre-calculus for the dummies. <laughs> Dude, it was, it was like the original SNL cast, but for sports. Yeah, it was, it was crazy. They it were just fucking, so cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot Sports, of yeah, Keith Olbermann and Dan Patrick and Damn. Fucking, we got we got to fucking get what we got to fucking shoot our shot. Get one of these motherfuckers on Fox on my fucking do it. Thanks for having me, guys. Dude, thanks for, anytime, thanks Danny. Danny. We really appreciate you taking the time, brother. Yeah, I miss uh, you. It's hope you're staying you. safe over in the quarantine. Just hanging, dude. All right, brother. We'll talk to you soon. Talk Love soon, you guys. Dan. Thanks, Stay man. Stay safe. Bye.